I'm just going to just begin okay. and do what it is I do. Um, I am very, 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 very emotional today. And this is a big thing for you. Mm -hmm. For reasons that will be explained throughout the filming, but it's a massive thing for someone in spirit. And um, he is the reason that you're here. Uh, he chose you. I had five and a half thousand entries for this filming competition over a set period of days, and I don't choose. I get my daughter Poppy, who's six, to choose because I don't want to be drawn in to thinking I want to read for you and I thought it would be completely individual if she did it. So we sat her down and we scrolled back through all the entrants and some of the posts had nine, 900, one had 1800 and she scrolled and she just said, Mummy, that lady there. And I said, um, and I was shocked. And I thought, right, okay, that'll do. <laughs> and uh, there she was and, and I said, Poppy, how come did you choose her? What was it? She said, Mummy, uh, uh, her son appeared in the room. Now, my daughter's six years old, and she's hugely, hugely psychic. And I think if she could have been here today, she would have. So she was chosen to choose you. Um, it went very wrong at the end, Debbie. It, he thought he wasn't prepared for it. It was too soon. Mm. And... He speaks a hundred miles an hour. He's oh yes. Like, <laughs> he's like, I can't. It's just like, whoa, slow down. It's mm -hmm. like he need, he has to get it all in in the one yeah. sentence in case you tell him to shut up. So, <laughs> and you did tell him shut up quite often. Slow down, shut up. So he doesn't know what to say first, and he's all like upside down with himself. So it's okay. He loves you very much. Um, he feels he let you down. Mm. I know. Never. He tried so hard to hang on and to live. And he's fought the fight for two years, the longest two years ever. And not once, not once did he think during that time that he would die, not once. I know. I'm not gonna die, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna live. I'm gonna live forever. I'm gonna have kids, I'm gonna get married, I'm gonna do everything I'm gonna do. Yeah. And that was what kept him going. Yeah. There were occasions since April of this year that the thought of dying did enter his head. Okay. And it was your eyes that gave it away. Mm. I think you knew more than he did. And I'm not sure if you thought you kept things back from him. But he, you tried to tell him as much as you could. Yeah. But he knows that you kept some of it back. And he's okay with that. Mm -hmm. But you know the thing? <laughs> so even though it was almost an unspoken thing, you just had this thing that you could do between the two of you where you could speak and you didn't need to say anything. Yeah. And so you could sit there in silence but speak a thousand words. Mm. And um, he still does that to you even today. From mid-May, he wasn't feeling very well. Mm -hmm. And you could see. Mm -hmm. the, now that look back at pictures, yes, didn't it? The Hindsight's about? a wonderful thing, isn't yes. it? Yes. And yes. Um, it's his head, his head's not well, it's, he's dizzy and he feels faint. Yes. And um, his breathing is very, very, very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And it's the energy. He's, he's always had energy for, for someone that's fought cancer. Yes. It was an unusual form of cancer. And he was saying that although it wasn't stereotypical, it was difficult. It had a high percentage rate of survival. Yes. His did. But from Christmas onwards, it got slightly more complicated and other contributing factors were coming into it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if his immune system is incorporated in this somehow because he's saying to me that he, he kept worrying he was going to be sick or be sick. Worried about an infection. That's the, the, yes. the like getting flu yes. or pneumonia or yes. because he couldn't fight it off. Yes. And so everything was like had to be quite sterile and he he didn't feel he was kept in a bubble and he wants to say that testimony to the fact that you actually let him live his life knowing that the slightest little thing could set it off and for you half the time it was heart and mouth. 
Yes, very much Let so. him out. Yeah. But you gave him the normal life of a normal boy his age. And he can't thank you enough for that. Life was normal. He doesn't even know what normal is anymore, but it was. And you and Dad. And... Who's Stephen? His brother. Did he not call him Stephen now? I know I was calling Steve-O or Steve or... Oh, Stephen, <laughs> yeah. Oh, dickhead. Yes. <laughs> for being really honest here. <laughs> Don't be nice Brotherly love. He'll yeah. know I'm not. He'll know. He'll think I'm not here if I don't call him. <laughs> Brave beyond belief. Um, the sacrifices that he made were unbelievable. As a brother, but he knows it. Had it been the other way around, he'd have done exactly the same. Yes. Thing. Christmas was um, difficult. It was. It was difficult for him because there was always the worry that it would be his last. Yeah. And you never showed that. And it was, again, as normal as normal could be. Who let the lanterns off for him? Oh, lots of people. He loves, by the way, lanterns, okay? Uh -huh. Anything that makes a kapow, I'm here. It, it, for a quiet boy, he's all in your face. He's like, ba bam, I'm here. Yeah. And he likes that, even though he's not here for you to see, here for me to see. He likes that and he likes the fact that people let them off. And it was a bit of a saga, but anyway, he would have got a laugh. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And some, I don't know whether it was too windy and some of them weren't going up properly. And I don't know whether you set a light to a tree, but it's making me feel like you set a light to the tree, okay? <laughs> like, Mum, please, we're going to have to call the fire brigade out in a minute. It only could happen. Yeah. to you all yes but that was funny and you were determined that it was happening that night it mm -hmm. wasn't going to be tomorrow or the mm -hmm. day before it was that mm -hmm. night and you couldn't have cared less what the weather was like mm -hmm. and everybody was saying but they won't like they won't like and you're like they will you're not trying hard enough you've got to do mm -hmm. it and suddenly it went very quiet and the wind calmed and you got the majority of them up. and they all went and they didn't all go up at once but he liked that too because you weren't getting your own way so he liked the fact that they all went scattered because it made it last longer Somebody keeps seeing rainbows. Yes. Um, rainbows are his thing. <laughs> he loves them. Mm -hmm. um, my mum, bless her, does the same for me. And I can remember once driving along and we saw four rainbows in the sky at once. And I was gobsmacked. Mm -hmm. And I said to my mum, God, look at that, four rainbows all at once. What, thinks, what do you think causes that? And she said, I know what causes that. And I thought she was going to give some fantastic geographical anomaly thing of science and I said what then she said it's raining and sunny in a lot of places at once <laughs> that was so stupid <laughs> now when my mum needs to tell me she's here and I get vulnerable days mm -hmm. which are plentiful the rainbow will appear even when it's not meant to mm -hmm. and uh, Chris Duffer this is Sunday night <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, doesn't hear that very often. Is um, there for you? And I don't know if people are sending you in pictures of rainbows, like showing you rainbows that are occurring, but he's making me feel that other people will start commenting on the rainbows okay. and saying, look, there was a rainbow today. And mm -hmm. that's all of Chris. Yeah. Did he do stock car racing? Yes. Or, oh, well, I I just kind of, yeah. Did he try? Mm -hmm. Did he want to? Yes. He used to go up and watch it. Okay, loved it. And he keeps showing me a car, quite battered, with a white, like a Herbie car, but it's not Herbie, but it's like black or dark, and it's got like a white sign yes. on it, with mm -hmm. numbers on it, like mm -hmm. 735 or mm -hmm. 7 something, yes. three numbers. I don't know if that's his car, but yes. that's his baby, it was his baby. Um, cars were him, him and cars, and he just loves cars. Cars the movie, cars the film, cars anything to do with cars, that's mm -hmm. what he does at Blair now. <laughs> He's got a car showroom, you know. <laughs> I am. Um, I, people often ask me what I think it is, and I don't refer to it as heaven. Everybody's interpretation is different, but I like to think of it as a place called Planet Zog, and I think that's where we go. And it's as far away as Australia, and there's only a one-way ticket, and you need interpreters and uh, mediums and psychics the world over are interpreters, and we can hear them in like a phone call. And uh, in Planet Zog, it's just the same as it is here. And he's got his car showroom in Planet Zog. And can you tell Mum and Dad it's doing really well? <laughs> Good. Two days before he went, I don't know if it was you that got told that that was it. I do expect a, a not very nice ending. Mm. 
because they'd done all they could do effectively and parts of Chris's body were failing him. Yes. And it was kind of starting from the head down. He was finding it difficult to communicate. Very much so. And he couldn't um, communicate verbally, but he could hear everything you said. Can I just tell you that he heard all your waffling <laughs> and all your going on? And um, did you feel his hands? Yes. He was trying to tell you that he could respond back yes. by squeezing you. Yes. He's so pleased. Yeah. Uh, and his eyebrows, if it wasn't his hands, um, it was his eyebrows. Raising him up and down, yeah. yeah. It, it's how he's. Um, I wonder why I was doing that. <laughs> Just the whole. I had to get it across to you. I could hear you that I wasn't gone yet. Mm -hmm. He's got a really stupid, horrific sense of humour, I have to say. <laughs> because he's at times when, like, they thought I'd gone and I hadn't. <laughs> yes. And I don't know if you were checking his pulse, but it was like, oh, is that it? And he, and he came back again. He had fun with that bit. Sorry, it's just <laughs> who he is. <laughs> Mate, yeah, are we gone yet? He, um... asleep and he's saying that it looked more painful than it was and it looked uncomfortable mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he fought it he wasn't going to go without mm -hmm. a fight did he? yeah he fought it every step of the way mm -hmm. and uh, even when the light was there he wasn't having any of it just one more minute but he used to say that to you as a child it's bedtime just one more minute I was going to have my one more minute and no one was going to take that from me. And I fell asleep. I'm holding your hand or I'm in your arms. I'm being, I'm with you. I'm right there. And uh, I closed my eyes. Although I hadn't really opened them, but I closed them properly and that was it. And you kissed him. You told him how much you loved you. And he heard every word. You stayed for a long time. Yeah. You overstayed. <laughs> because he's at the corner of the room and it's like, Mum, you need to go. They need to do things. But he knew it would be like that. Mm -hmm. um, he needs to thank everybody. So this is a thank you to everybody mm -hmm. who came to his funeral. Oh. Mobbed. Crazy, he felt like Robbie Williams. It was just <laughs> hell there for me. It was incredible. Very um, humbling. Yes, it was, to know that he was so popular. Yeah. And that so many people were there to support, not just yourself, but to support him too. Mm -hmm. um, they're still doing that now. Yes. And it's everybody is doing so much to give to the world the fight that he did and to make it easier for others in the same position. And there is a cookie jar or a biscuit barrel, as I'd call them. Mm -hmm. And I don't really know what that means, that he's saying people are putting money into the cookie jar. Yeah, it's a foundation that we've set up for him for. Then he's extremely humbled by that. And it's called the cookie jar. Yes. Well, he loves the name. And, um, or the biscuit barrel. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, it's getting opened all the time and, and, and everybody's gearing together to do the things, silly things, crazy things, just to make money. And he knows that you'll spend it wisely in his memory. There are other things that you're planning to do in his name. Um, the foundation is going beyond just Fife, it seems to be growing. Yes. And you're wanting it to be Scottish-wide and eventually UK-wide. Yes. You'll get that. And do you know why? Because he's right behind you. And he'll never, ever, ever not be the driving force. Who's her name? Dog. Past. Yes. She's with him. <laughs> Bet she is. <laughs> um, she's in here now. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. Did you have to have her put down? Yes. She's saying thank you. Oh, Debbie, she's lovely. Oh. Okay. Um, she's with Chris. Her best friends. Mm -hmm. I loved her to bits. Still does. Your mum's passed also. There's a grandma figure with him that I need to acknowledge. I don't know if it's your grandma or... Right. 
um, be Dave's mum. Okay, there's an older lady that I need to acknowledge, okay. Okay. Um, your mum's still here. Mm -hmm. She's broken. I'm sorry. She's not going to recover from this. As a mum, I don't know how you're finding your strength. She can't seem to find hers. She doesn't know the Paula. She does. Really? She have Alzheimer's or dementia? I don't no. know. How have you not told her? No communication for years since my father passed. She knows. She knows. And I don't know how, but she does. And, uh... You need somehow to communicate before it's too late, Debbie. I don't know how that would make you feel. Opens a lot of old wounds. I know it does. Mm -hmm. But he's urging me to, he's urging me that there is a valid reason. While you've still got the chance. I know how difficult it would be for you. But it's really awkward. I really feel uncomfortable, but I'm just. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I don't want you to be in the position where she passes, and you have. I've been there three times with members of my family, with my own mum, and I didn't get the chance to say goodbye. And the guilt that I feel is horrific. But I've come to terms with that. Somehow she knows he's passed. And I don't know whether or not you just leave it like that. But I think what he's urging me to say to you, and I have to because he's very insistent, is when the time comes. Make sure that you make the right decision to go and say goodbye to her or not. He'll lead you. You don't have to do it now. Okay. Because he doesn't want you to be in any more pain. News gets around. Mm. In weird ways. And she knows. But I'm almost sure that she has a head issue. And there's something not happy going on in her head. So whether it's dementia or a stroke or a problem upstairs, and uh, he's only giving me it the way he's giving me it. So excuse me if it doesn't sound very right, but I am being led by Chris and it's just, Mum, just if you get the chance to do something, do it. Because he doesn't want you to feel that you should have. Okay. Um, but we're not for that now. That would be later on in the rest of the year. Okay. The more the foundation gets bigger and the more people that cover it because there's newspapers interested in it and there's people that will do write-ups you need to get to magazines you need to be kind of promoting it that way um it gets around like reuter it just does and um just be aware just be prepared for that is all they say okay okay the older lady that he's with would be your his dad's mum Grandma on that side, okay. There's a J connection as well that I need to acknowledge with him. So I don't need to John or James, but I need him to acknowledge the J. Um, there's seven of them, or one of seven. The seventh the month of July or the seventh month is important to her, so I need to acknowledge that. And I don't know if I'm supposed to count up seven people or being one of seven in spirit, but there's a couple to the side of her, which would be aunts or uncles. But they're not, I don't want to say they're not important because that sounds awful, but that they're not, and he's not allowing them to come through because it's not, <laughs> it's not their time. <laughs> it's, it's, it it's, yeah. yeah, you know, <laughs> this is my space, you can bug off. <laughs> and why not? <laughs> there is a photograph that's very important to him of him and I don't know where this is but it's oval and it's of him whether or not this is going to represent him in the cookie appeal or it's going to be yes old. it's I know it. mm -hmm. his face yes when he looked good yes he loves it and that needs to be the face of me the, yes the face of Very much so. cookie mm -hmm. um, it's the one that everybody will associate yes with him Mm -hmm. Use it on everything. Okay. Mum, can you just tell my story to everybody? Please. I need them to know. Um, he was at one point angry with the hospital. Oh, yeah. 
and um, thinks that you possibly still are. Very much so. And if I'm really honest, I've got a goosey. It makes me feel that they could have done more and they failed to do something mm -hmm. that would have given him such a fighting chance. And he can't understand why that chance was not given to him. And they never gave him what they were supposed to. And he doesn't understand why. And that's what needs to be told. There are people here responsible for not... It was hit and miss. It wasn't a guaranteed success mm. if he'd have had yeah. done what he was supposed to have done. Mm -hmm. But then neither was it a failure. It, 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 his reaction to something could have been so different. So why didn't they take the things out the fridge and put them in there, is what he's saying. Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. their cells or... Cells he should have had put in um, his spine? Or? Yeah, it's, it was, a, it was a, a transplant, bone marrow transplant. Okay, from... Sorry, a stem cell transplant. Stephen? Yes. And that was never used? No. Why not? Cancer, they said that the cancer was too far gone. They had them for a while? Mm-hmm. They had them when it was not too far gone. Oh, I know. Yeah. In a different county, or a different part of the country, uh -huh. it would have been already done. Yes. And he thinks it boils down to financial. Yeah. And how much am I not worth? <laughs> and that breaks his heart. I'm sorry. If I'd have lived uh, Bournemouth, Wales, or Glasgow, I would have been given maybe an extra six months. And when those cells replicated, who knew? Who knew? They don't have a crystal ball. They don't consult a psychic. You wish they had. I'd have told them. <laughs> <laughs> um, please don't regret it. There was nothing that you could have done. You tried. Mm. But you were banging your head against a brick wall. And um, they weren't ever going to listen, Mum. I don't really know why they took them in the first place. I think it was to look good. It was to make it look as if they were doing something. Yeah, protocol. When, when really they were doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And um, they had them there for long enough. They could have used it. And it could have helped me if it had gained me a week. It's mm -hmm. a week of my life I deserved. Yes. That's the story that you need to tell. Don't be afraid. You'll get tried to get shut up. You'll be, uh, you'll be told, but <laughs> I'd like to see them try and tell you to shut up, he said, because you never do. And when you think you're onto something, mm -hmm. you go for the jugular. And that is something that you need to promise him that you'll do. It's his legacy. It's what his dying was all about. He loves his music. Mm -hmm. Not my choice of music, but he likes it. Did you used to put him his music on in his ears? He used to. He, he was able to do it. Yeah, it's um, what right till the end is what kept him going. It stopped his head being stupid. Mm. His head used to um, tell him make up stories, and in the end, it was difficult to ignore it. And so, if he put his little music on, it would make him into a positive place. Um, he missed his food really. For a skinny boy, he can eat Scotland. Just loved his food. And the last couple of weeks, he couldn't tolerate it. And he was finding that really hard. Yeah. He never got to one last supper. Um, he, he was feeling quite nauseous all the time. And being, I don't know if he was being sick, but he's showing me actually feeling very sick. Yeah. Um, that was hard for you, he knew. There were times when he made you leave him or asked you to go. He didn't want you to go. He never wanted you to. He did it because he knew that you were tired. He said, I want to be on my own now. Okay, I want to go to sleep. And you'd go home. He only did it because he wanted you to have some rest. Whenever you left the room, he'd cry. He'd like that on his own. You silly sausage. And he knows you would have stayed there for 24 hours a day. And walking out of that room, I bet you cried going down the hallway too. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish now I'd not asked you to leave. <laughs> I love you. To the moon and back, you know. I always will. And I will never, ever, ever, ever stop being around you. I
promise. I've got, apart from when I'm selling cars. <laughs> <laughs> I've got nowhere else I'd sooner be than with you. He keeps leaving you um, feathers. White feathers, you must be finding them. Or if not, you need to start from today. I swear if there's not one waiting for you near your car, I, I'll tell you off. <laughs> he's, he's getting to grips. It, the thing is with Cookie, which is Cookie, mm-hmm. is that he, um, and the cookie jar, yeah, penny dropped. <laughs> um, he does it his way. Mm-hmm. Always did, always will. And in life, as in death, he's unique. You must wonder why him. Yes. It's a question that he hears you all asking every day. Yeah. Why him? The answer's quite bizarre. Because he was strong enough to be. Mm. And he was strong enough to be, if you will, the voice for the rest of the world with this. And the love you have as a family and the strength as a family is strong enough to promote the cause. And that's why. No other reason. It's almost like a sacrifice, he feels. I don't know if you used to like Scooby-Doo, the movie. There's a line in Scooby-Doo and he's repeating it. A sacrifice? I'm a sacrifice. He's doing it for me now. It's a terrible impression of Scooby-Doo, I grant that, but yours was much better. And that's what he thinks he was, a sacrifice to make it so that this doesn't have to happen to any other family. And there is um, some big letters that need writing. I need to get members of parliament and everything involved here. It needs, um, needs opening up to the public. And I now wonder why you were chosen suddenly the world will know about this and will uh, help the, the Cookie Jar Foundation grow and grow and grow. That's why. And he's so thankful to you for being brave enough to come and have this done. Because it's the only way he could really get you to sit still mm. and, yeah. and have told what you need because you know you can't, you don't sit still, you're mm-hmm. so busy, you're mm-hmm. like a headless chicken running around but that's you. I need to say a really strange thing to you which will sound peculiar. In all of this running around, don't forget to grieve. He says you'll know what he means. It's okay to let it go. Do it in your own time. Time doesn't heal. Whoever wrote that needs shooting. It's like having a hole the size of the Grand Canyon ripped out of you and trying to stick it back together with Play-Doh. It's impossible. And it could take you the rest of your life before you feel any better. But you adapt. But you've not started your adaptation yet. You're so busy with everything. It's almost like he's gone to the shops and you just think it's a bit late coming back. Yeah. Or he's down with his car to mm-hmm. about. And if that's how you need to do it, then you know what, Debbie? That's fine. It's your rules. Just because Mrs. Taylor down the road might do it differently doesn't mean to say that you need to be her. You, you be yourself. But allow yourself time to miss it. Okay? It's when he'll come in the closest to you. Just you and him time, like you always used to. Very, um, I want to say as a mummy's boy, but he'll hate me if I say that. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. But you did have a bond. Yeah. He was always there, even before I became a special little boy. Little, little cuddly boy. Always was, always will be. Is there anything you'd like to ask? Is he able to have us off, Jen? All the time. Every day. And the Wednesday that he passed, was he in the living room? Did I see him? Yes, you did. Out the corner of your eye. Uh huh. Yes, he walked by. Doesn't think you're ready for a full visual yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a different magazine that I don't think we want to look at. But he doesn't think you're ready for the full, the full mm-hmm. Monty, but it will always be. Is that in your living room, if I sit here, is there a door there? Or in, to the hallway? Yes. Because I'm walking through the hallway. Uh huh. And you're seeing me out the corner of your eye. Yes. That's where he'll walk, to the hallway. And um, so it's not like he was in the living room. It was like he was walking by it almost. He was at the door of the living room. Yeah, it's exactly where I am. And he's kind of just stood there. Yes. And it was like a split second. And I think he thought, was that? Was that not? Mm -hmm. But it was. Just check in, make sure you're okay. He worries more about you than you do about him. Roll reversed. Yeah. Um, he almost, he because he knows, did. he knows you. He knows every inch of you. He knows what push, buttons to push, because mm-hmm. he could push them too. 
He says, don't paint me like a saint, because I'm not. But he knew what buttons to push. But, you know, if he pushed a button, he'd feel such remorse for pushing it. He'd be all over you like a wet rag trying to make everything feel okay. Did he used to write you little notes to say sorry? Like, uh. I, I've got to write you a little note. Like, I feel like if I've done something wrong, I've got to get you on the good side again. So I'd have to write you like a little note. He did it once. Oh, I can remember, yeah. Okay, still, that's what he's still like. Like, I'm sorry. And I found, I found pieces of paper and a bookcase and it was stuff that he'd written. I don't even know when he'd written it, years ago probably. And I was really down and I went to the bookcase. It's the little notes he's talking about, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were just meant for you to find. Mm-hmm. You've got a little memory box of his. You just get like a little memory box. Yes, started. Yeah. Um, put things in there. And it, it, it might not even be things that um, he had here, but it's things that will remind you of him to show his nieces and nephews. Mm. Um, just just that you can go and it's okay to go in there. Don't feel that you need to, you know, I can't do that because it'll make me upset. This is an okay thing. Sometimes they're tears of joy. And they're not just tears of the missing. And he says that you're not crying for what you've missed, you're crying for what you will never now have. <laughs> and he understands that. But it, you'll always have him. And I'd give anything right now to be able to let you see what I see. I'd chop my head off if I thought it would work. I'm sorry. I feel really guilty. <laughs> but he'll always show you, always. And when you're ready, you'll see him. But you need to let him know, okay? Because he's not just going to come running in the living room. No. <laughs> Seems to want to freak you out. <laughs> he likes to sit on the bed with you. He likes to sit just before you go to bed. He likes to watch you go to sleep, which he now thinks sounds a bit creepy. <laughs> <laughs> he does a bit. <laughs> but he likes just to sit there and it's, he knows then that's when you're peaceful and that you're okay. And then he'll wander around the house doing his bits and pieces, but please look out for the signs, you will find them. And they're going to be funny. Because that's just, just his sense of humour coming through. I have to say, talking about Christopher's sense of humour, there was a piece of meat found from his brother's sandwich had miraculously disappeared from the bedroom. It had gone into his shoes at the back door. And we've always wondered. Imagine. Mm. Ta-da! Mm-hmm. He will have fun. Oh yes, I bet. Yes, he will. He likes turning things on and off. He'll like making things break. You know, like putting the sky information button on when there's nobody near the channel and um, you know, like moving things around in the kitchen just we'll have fun and you'll always know don't question it oh mm-hmm. he's here again mm-hmm. because that's what he's going to do just to show you you will get it when you need it most which right now is all the time mm-hmm. I'm going to leave you with his love thank you okay thank you so I would very much like um, to recommend Paula to to other um, friends, family. Um, I would use Paula definitely again for any future readings. It feels all very surreal, um, and of course, I'm just trying to process the information that that Paula's passed on. Um, I think it will take some time to to sink in, um, but I'm pleased of what's come through and, uh, and everything that, that's been relayed through Paula. Yes, definitely much part of the healing process um, to know that, that Christopher's okay and that some communication from him and, and taking things forward and, and, and a sense of relievement that what we're doing in, in his name, he's happy with because you always had that doubt that he might not want you to go and do what we're planning to do. So, yes, it's, it's very, been very much a healing process, part of the healing process, yeah. Um, we've got various things in the pipeline. We've had quite a lot of people coming um, to us. Um, we're talking about doing a, a cycle ride um, from our place of residence Um, down to London and then from London over to Belgium next summer and from what we can gather there's at least 40 to 60 people interested in doing this um, to raise money for the Cookie Jar Foundation. Mm -hmm.